If you've never used Git or GitHub before, then you're missing out on all the powers of controlling versions of your code and keeping remote backups. In this video, we're going to look at using Git in Replit as well as GitHub. Now, the first thing is, what is Git and what is GitHub and why are they different? Well, Git is a technology that allows us to create snapshots of our code at certain points in time, check them in and check them out and maintain an archive of the history of our code. Now, this isn't similar to Replit's history feature, which we all know and love, which gives us access to every keystroke. No, what this is, is us picking a point in time where we say, I'm happy with my code. I want to make a copy of it somewhere else now so that if anything happens, I can go back to it. GitHub is a remote website that allows you to remotely make backups of those Git repositories. So think of it this way. Git is the entire technology stack that allows you to make those backups and GitHub is where you can push them so they're somewhere else remote and safe. Now, why would you want this? Well, we've all made that mistake when developing of deleting the wrong bit of code, of wiping out the wrong file, of accidentally uploading a file with the same name and overwriting the contents of the file you actually wanted. Now, our history feature is amazing, but some of these issues are almost unrecoverable unless you use Git to take snapshots of your code at regular intervals. We can also create branches where we can work on implementing a feature or experimenting without damaging the main source of the code. And we can even merge those changes together. So there's always at least one working version of the code and branches that we're working on to implement new features. So let's get started with Git. Here I have a program that uses some AI and embed chain to read a bunch of PDFs and then allow you to use a chatbot to ask questions of them. In this case, I'm using a bunch of technologies and secrets, but I've got a folder full of free how to program PDFs and I can then go and ask it questions about those languages. So for instance, now this is a nice little program, but I'm going to start experimenting soon to add UI to it and to turn it into a full web app that I can sell access to. At this point, I want to start making a copy of this working code so that I can go back to it and make versions and branches so that I can experiment to my heart's content. Our first job is to bring up the Git pane. In tools, we'll find the Git pane right here. And we're just going to hit the button that says initialize Git repository. Now it's important to note at this stage that this Git repository is inside this REPL. It is not external to the REPL at all. And that's really, really important because it does mean if you delete the REPL, you'll also delete all your Git images. And there we go. Our Git has been initialized and we have our repository. And the repository is basically the store of all the files in our REPL. And our main branch is coincidentally the one that's got all the main files in. Let's take a look at the history. We'll see we've got that initial commit. We've got who did it, the email address, a date and a hash just to know what's going on. So we've got our commits into the main branch. Let's see what happens if we change some code. So here in my code, I've got a bit of test code just to stop going through the folder after five files. So I'm going to get rid of that. I've made my program a lot more efficient. And if I run it, we can see the differences that are going to happen there. Now you can see a change that it picks up straight away. You'll notice in the file pane, the file we're working on now has a yellow color and the letter M next to it. What that means is the file has been modified. It's been changed. So our REPL is completely aware of what is different between Git repo and the live code. And this is important because we need to know what have we changed since our last commit? What files are we working on and what code has moved since then? Now, if we're happy with this and we want to commit it to the repo, we want to say, OK, code, you are going to be the new main branch. Then we have to do a few things back in the Git pane. What we need to do, first of all, is give a summary message of the commit. So something like now we've got a staging area. Staging means we place the file up and ready for committing to the branch. If we don't stage a file, that's not going to happen. We can stage them all. 
or we can stage them one at a time. I'm just going to click stage all because there's only one file to change here. And once we've got those two things, we can commit that change. You'll see there in the pane straight away, we'll see the update. We'll see that the main.py file in our file tray is now no longer different to the rest of it. And we can actually see what's gone on there if we want to. Let's take a look at that again with multiple files. Now inside my docs folder, what I haven't realized is I've put a lot of files in there. So what I'm very quickly going to do is use the shell to go in there and remove most of the files because I don't really want all these files to be in my Git repo. So you'll see there I've deleted all those files from the docs folder using a simple command. We go back to our Git pane now. You'll notice straight away our folder has a yellow icon saying that we've deleted 264 files from it. And you can see all those files here already queued up. Now, if you've made a mistake and you don't actually want that to happen, we can bring some of those back. So let's bring back my Python programming book. Now, this little button here is the reset changes button. I can click that on an individual file or on all the files to bring them back to where they were. Let's just bring it back with the Python programming book. And you'll see there are now only 263 differences and the file is returned to my REPL. Now, I do want to get rid of the rest of them. So I'm going to say deleted old PDFs in my commit message. I'm going to stage all of them. And of course, you can scroll down to see all of that if you want to. But I'm going to commit. And you'll see there that all those PDF files are now gone from my REPL and they're committed to my main Git branch. So multiple files are easy and we can make up our mind depending on what we want to do. You can also stage individual files if you've made some changes but don't want everything to change just yet. Let's just check this works with a single file. So that seems to be working fine. So all my commits are looking good. We ask a question. I'm going to add in here. So I've added in two lines of code. One to reset the screen before asking the question and the second to just pause until the user presses a key once the question has been answered so they can so they can read the answer before it's dismissed. You'll see once again we've been picked up as having that. I'm also going to take my readme and make some changes to that. So with the readme file change I've got two files to queue up to go into my branch. Now of course with our git pane we can just click on the files to see them. And we've actually got a really cool function called the diff viewer. On the bottom of the page, we can click diff and we can see the difference between this file and what was originally in the file. Additions and removals will be color coded differently. And you can see there everything I removed from the original readme is there. And I'm thinking actually at this point that original readme was from the open source product that I forked this from. So I probably need to leave that intact. So in fact, what I'm going to do is only queue up the changes to main.py. That's very simple. Clicking the plus button to stage just that one file means that I can put a commit message in here. And of course, the aim is to be as descriptive as possible in these commit messages. And we click commit. Now you'll see there that the commits happened. Main.py has gone back to normal, but readme is still modified. So I can even just make individual file commits as we go. It's important to point out at this stage, if we close this REPL down and come back to it, it's going to be in exactly the same state. Our code is going to be exactly where it is. And we can combine our history feature and Git to make sure that we have version control and an extensive history of changes that we can go and look at if we need to. OK, let's look at creating a branch. Now, you might wonder, what's the point? Well, imagine a tree. We can leave our main code here our main branch, and we can split off to make some changes. And we can split off in multiple directions. So if you're experimenting in different ways, we can flip between the two branches with different things going on or multiple branches. And we can experiment to our heart's content, knowing that we're not damaging that main working code. People and companies that use Git for production code usually use the main branch as the working version of the product and all the other branches as experimentation. And if you've got multiple people working on projects like we do at Replit, I can make my branch of the product, add my changes in and later on combine them back into the main branch so they're in the main production code. Let's go make a new branch. We're going to go back to the repo and create a branch. 
and I'm going to call this my experiment branch. Click create and you'll see there that not only has it created it, but it switched us over to that being the active branch. And you'll see there the experiment has all the same commits that the main branch had because the moment we create a branch, it is essentially a copy of that main branch. But let's make a change to this one that we wouldn't do to the other. Let's just completely get rid of the process to add documents. Now you might ask why we're doing that. Well, the reality is the way embed chain works is when you've added the document once, it's there in the cache for us to access. So we don't actually need to access it again. You'll see all the changes are ready to go. I'm going to put my commit message in and I'm going to stage everything and commit. It's all added. Let's check it works. And that's working well. The caching has worked. So our branch now is pretty good. Now let's just see what happens if we change back to the original branch. If I click on main and I click switch to branch, watch what happens to the REPL. Straight away, all the code changed to what that original branch had. And I'm running now my original branch, which still at the start tries to read in any more PDFs, which has that unfortunate side effect of pausing it for a fraction of a second when it runs for the first time. I can go back and switch into my experiment branch anytime and you'll see all the code changes to update with that. Working in branches is great because it takes a copy of the code at that particular time and lets it experiment. And if the experiment works, we can always merge that code back into the main branch. So let's imagine we want to merge our experimental branch back into main now, we're happy with it. Let's click and switch to main and then we're going to use some shell magic. We're going to go in and we're going to use the command git merge and the name of the branch we want to merge in. It's going to be experiment. Now notice almost straight away there, the code changed enormously. And our main branch now has all the changes that the experimental branch gave us. That means we can even go in and remove the experimental branch if we want to. So let's switch back to our main branch. Let's grab our shell again and we'll do git branch hyphen hyphen delete and the name of the branch go back to our git pane and we'll see the only branch left now is our main branch. Branching is great if you've got multiple changes you want to make at once. Let's take for example that maybe on one branch I'm experimenting with the UI and I'm messing about with that. On a different branch I could be working on the logic of the program and on a different branch again maybe I could be working on the database code. I could merge all those back into main once each of them's working and this gives me the ability to switch between modes, work on different sub projects on the same program without messing up all the code or without leaving it in an unrunnable state. Working with Git within the REPL is amazing and will really change the way you do version control. But there's also one more superpower that we can add into it to make sure that our Git repository is also stored elsewhere. And that's adding GitHub to the mix. GitHub is different from Git. It is a remote third party service that takes your commits and stores them online. This allows for collaboration between multiple people in multiple locations and gives you that peace of mind of having a backup of your code somewhere else. Let's see how we use that in Replit. I'm going to start a new REPL for this just to show you the process from the very beginning. So once again, I'm going to set up my files. I'm going to initialize my Git repo and this creates the local one. So we always need to have a local one. I'm going to just make a quick commit to show that I can do that as usual. So with that initial commit out the way, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up here and connect to GitHub. Now this is a reasonably straightforward process. If you've not done it before, there's that button there, connect to GitHub, and we just have to authorize it before being kicked back to our page. Now back in the settings pane, you'll see the remote option has a GitHub dropdown. Let's select that and we have the ability to create a remote GitHub repo. Now that's important because that will create a separate repo on the GitHub website that will allow us to push to it. Let's give it some information. Don't forget the name can't have any spaces in at this point. And you've got the option to make it public or private depending upon if you pay for GitHub or not. I'm gonna leave mine public for now. And I'm going to click create repo. You'll know that's done when we've got a remote address for it. And you can always follow that address to see your GitHub repo or click the button at the top. 
Give it a second for the GitHub viewer to synchronize or we can refresh ourselves and you'll see that it's connected. Now it needs a change to be able to push it. So I'm going to go and make a change to the code very quickly. And you'll see that I've got the ability to make a commit as normal, but I've also got this button at the top that says publish branch as origin slash main. What that means is if I click that, that's going to actually push that to GitHub. So let's give that a go. And there you'll see it's pushed. And if we check the website, there are all the files. So that means we've pushed it over to a separate place, which is pretty cool. So publishing our branch is pushing our changes to GitHub, which is important for us because we need to be able to do that. With this app, if we install embed chain, like we've done before, that actually installs a lot of stuff that we probably don't want to go to GitHub. In fact, so much stuff that if I try to push and publish at the moment, not only do we have 38,438 files to push, but some of these are too big to actually go to the GitHub repo. There is a maximum file size of any one file. And if I push that with the command line, we can see that error message popping up. And you'll see that I've got one .so file, which is over 600 megabytes. And that exceeds GitHub's limit on the free plan of 10 megabytes per file. So you can get into a problem with pushing these remote things where the files themselves are too big. So how do we deal with that then? Well, actually these files aren't that important and I can build these files whenever I want. My REPL is always going to be here and I can build it from a version of embed chain whenever I want. So what I'm actually going to do is the VNV folder, which was created when I installed all those libraries, I'm going to tell GitHub to ignore it. And the way I do that is by creating a file called .git ignore and inside of it, placing the name of the directory forward slash asterisk, which basically tells it any file in that folder to ignore. And if we go back to our Git interface, then you'll see that instead of that 38,000 files, I've only got seven that need to be committed and published. So I'll commit those and I'll push the changes. And in this case, synchronize and push do the same thing. Doesn't matter which button I press, but pushing moves the data up to the server and we're good to go. Now that's pushing and that's dealing with Git ignore and dealing with issues. But one of the really cool things about Git is it allows you to collaborate. Let's see how that would work. Let's imagine that somebody is working with us and we'll go to the GitHub website to do this just to show you it works by any method of adding to the code. And I'll just change this file here and I'll remove the PDF import loop. So I've saved that and I've committed the changes to the remote branch. Now you'll see here, as soon as we refresh our Git pane, it tells us that there is one commit to pull. Now pushing means sending the data up to GitHub Pulling means getting new data from GitHub. You'll notice there that the synchronize and pull buttons are activated. That's because they do the same thing in this instance. If we click that, we'll pull that commit in and you'll see the code updates to reflect what it looks like on Git. And you'll also see the commits update as well. So this means multiple people can work on the same GitHub repo at the same time and it even allows you to work in different ways at different times if you need to. Now, sometimes if you're working on a file at the same time, you may get a conflict and let's simulate that now. What I'm going to do in my local version, I'm going to add a Chevron to the question and I'm going to commit that. But importantly, I'm not going to push it yet. Now back on the GitHub website, I'm going to go to that same file. I'm going to change it. I'm going to add a colon instead of a Chevron. So there are two different things on the same line of code. And this is a very small issue, but you can imagine that the types of issues you might get are quite big. When we attempt to synchronize those changes then from our client, that it won't push because trying to pull has caused a conflict. So what we do is we click this review changes button and you'll see here that we've got that same line repeated with the gap between it to show the two different versions. And this would do the same thing for a chunk of code. What we need to do is decide on which one we want to keep. So I'll delete the one we don't want, as well as the chevrons and the head and the hash value. And our Git interface will update with complete pull. And of course, if we didn't want to do it, we could have bought it and we could discuss it. But I, I know what I'm doing here, so we complete the pull there. And what that'll actually do is merge the changes. So it'll pull down the change that was accepted. It'll push up the change that we agreed on. And you'll see there that we've got that message at the top that we've merged the branch, which just like we've done before, means that those two branches have been mixed together. And back on the GitHub website now, you'll see that that code has been updated to fix the conflict as we've suggested. Now working on branches works in a very similar way to local. We can create a branch like an experimental branch and we can push it, which 
creates that branch on the GitHub website as well so other people can see what we're doing or open it up and see the changes. And we can work on that to our heart's content. Now merging that branch in is a little bit different though because we can't just commit it back to main. What we have to do is a pull request, which means that we ask to pull that into the main branch of code, the changes. Now we can do that very easily by synchronizing our changes, going to the GitHub website and we'll see that we've got an ability to create a pull request at the top. If we click that, you've got an opportunity to, to explain what the changes were. You've got the opportunity to look at the changes and create it. Now, in a larger team, you might want to add somebody to review your changes to check that looks good. You may want to do that yourself. Some automated checks happen as a result, and we can merge the pull request. What the merge will do, very simply, is combine those two branches together. Experiment can go straight into our main and we can delete that branch then if we want. Most of this stuff you can set up to automate, but I'll let you find that stuff out on your own. And you'll see then, then that our main branch has the updates that we want. Pull requests are a nicer way of working with merging branches because you get reviews on your code and you can have a complete record of what was committed and when and how that changed, how it's gonna work. Using Git and GitHub in Replit will increase your productivity as a programmer and always have a working branch of your product to push out when you need to.